Hello, in this class we are going to see the control that's used to display data inside a Canvas app. This control is called Gallery and it's very used in several apps. Basically, every app that will show some information will use a Gallery. If we take a look at our app mockup, we will see that we have this contact list screen where we want to show the contact information. And we can see here that this list is a list that repeats the same way to display the data for all the contacts in the list. And this is basically a gallery when we are talking about Power Apps. So if we go here to our app, we see that we, when we are going to click here in the Find Contacts, we are going to navigate to that list of contacts. And that will be in a new screen that we need to create in order to display those. Here I've called in my planning, here in my mockup I have called this screen as contact list. So let's go back to the app and create a new screen. We, we could choose a template here uh, that has people in it already and it will provide us with a gallery with some configuration already, but let's create a blank screen so we can build from scratch and understand all the process. I'm going to click here on blank and it will give us this blank Canva called screen two in my case. I'm going to double click on this screen name and rename to contacts, contacts lists screen. And now we are going to insert the gallery to show the data. Here, if I go to the insert button, I can find the vertical gallery right here as the suggested option. We also have other types of galleries. If I expand the layout property here, we can see that we have vertical gallery, horizontal, flexible, height gallery, blank vertical gallery, and so on. The one I most use is the vertical gallery and sometimes the flexible height gallery when we don't know exactly the size of the information that's going to be inside it. In our case, let's use the simplest one, that's the vertical gallery, so we can learn the process of creating and configuring this control. I'm going to click on it and it will insert here in my app the gallery. It's just inserted and if we play the app, we can see how it looks. Let me just zoom in and we have this, this control here that has four lines. This is a gallery that shows information. Right now it's just showing sample information, but soon we are going to connect to our data table information. Let me exit the play mode and just redimension the gallery to occupy the full Canva of my app. Later in the course, we are going to resize again just to put the filter controls and the buttons in the bottom. But let's just keep it as a full page gallery so we can play better with it. Once I click on it, we can see here that we have the items property of the gallery. This video is sponsored by the support of my subscribers who like and comment on the videos. This class is part of a full course I have on Udemy where I teach beginners how to build their first apps. So if you want to ensure lifetime access and see the entire course, I suggest you to join me on Udemy. If the course isn't for you, that's okay, but I kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribe to this channel. Your engagement means a lot to me and motivates me to continue creating valuable content like this. Now, let's get back to the class and continue learning together. We can also find here in the properties pane the data source that also represents the items property. If I click on it, it will show here in the formula the items property. By default, when you insert a gallery from scratch, it just shows this information here, custom gallery sample, that's basically a table with some information just to provide this mockup, this sample data. 
but we want to connect to our existing table that's the TB context as we connected in previous classes here in the app. If we look here at the data part, we have TB context. So in the data source, let's change. Let's click here. So let's click in the data source drop down and choose the table that's going to show inside our gallery. That's TB contact. I'm going to click on it. And now the data will be replaced by the TB contact data. See, it's showing already all the items from my Excel file right now. We have the dev, Superman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, and so on. We are not seeing the names, the phone numbers, the emails, and soon we are going to learn how to show them right here. But one thing I want to show before is here that we have a layout property of the gallery. If we click here in this drop down, we can see that it will suggest a couple of layouts to us. Let me just decrease the zoom a little and try again. So when, once I click here, we can see that we have some layouts that we can choose. There's the blank layout, title, title and subtitle, and so on. There are a couple of them here in the bottom that are more intended for showing images that gives more highlights to the images of the gallery. But right now we have the image title and subtitle. Let's change to title, subtitle and body. Since right now we don't have an image to show for each user. We are going to see later how to show the image based on the emails of each user. But let's focus now in the text information. So let's change the layout to title, subtitle and body. Once I clicked here, the gallery shows the information that is a title, a subtitle and a body. In this case, in my case, in yours can be different, is bringing the comments, the department and the email. But depending on the column names on your data source, it can show different information here. Right, now let's understand better what's inside the gallery structure. When I select the gallery, I can see that we have this edit icon here in the top. If I click on it, it will highlight the first line of the gallery. That first line means the first item of the gallery. Whatever we change here inside this line will change inside the other lines as well. So, for example, if I click here in this first element, this first control, that's a label. And if I change, for example, the font size to from 14 to 20, it will change the font size of all the elements. So whatever I change here will change in the others. This first one is the template of the gallery. If I go here to the tree view and I find the gallery, I can see here in the left how the gallery looks like. There is the gallery as the parent item and inside the gallery we have its children. Everything that we insert in, in here will appear in the app for all the elements of the gallery. We can see here, for example, that we have a rectangle that's showing here in the left. There are some formulas to show the rectangle only for the selected item. So if I play the app, in this case, I will press Alt on my keyboard and click in Superman. The rectangle will show here. So there is some extra formula here to show and hide the rectangle based on the select item. And we are going to understand this better in the next class. We have also a separator here. That's a rectangle that's in this case is white. And that's why we're not seeing it very well. In order to see it, we could change the feel of the gallery, changing the background color. So we could select the gallery and here change the background color as we did for other elements already. I'm going to make it gray. And now we can see the rectangle right here. Once I click on it, we have a next arrow. That's an icon showing here in the left. We have a label that is the body a label that's the subtitle and a label that's the title. So basically we have one of each element here and it will reflect in the gallery for all the lines of our data source.
if we go to the spreadsheet and insert a new line in there, come here to the data source and refresh, it will reflect here inside the gallery. So basically, you add it once and it will reflect for all the others. That's the message I want to, you to take from this class. In the next class, we are going to see more properties of the gallery that are very important and understand better how to configure and access the columns from our data source to display here. So, see you in the next class.